Welcome to Between Two Speakers, an interview series where we sit down and speak with creatives in the entertainment marketing space. My name is Mike Zarin, and I am a composer as well as founder of a company called Sensit, where we specialize in all things music and sound design for theatrical advertising. Today we're sitting down with the one and only Eric Archer. If you are in the marketing space, Eric needs no introduction. If you are not and just checking this out, well, Eric is an acclaimed editor and creative director, an all-around solid dude. He's well known for A Quiet Place, both one and two, those campaigns. Sin City, Les Mis, Memoirs of a Geisha. He's a founder of Salty Dog, as well as worked at Create Advertising, Ignition, Ant Farm, and Hammer Films. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to just dive right in. How'd you get started cutting trailers? I mean, it's such a cliche, but collaboration makes for better work. And I think part of our industry in particular is it's still such a young industry that there isn't like a set path for someone to become an editor or a graphic designer. So much of it is mentorship. And were you mentored? So when it comes to things like sound design, I think along the way, you are maybe being unintentionally mentored by your competitors or your peers. And how has trailer audio evolved since you started? When I got started, um, the aesthetic was comparatively simple. Find a song. There's no such thing as stems most of the time. And the extent of your sound design was very simple, like swish booms. And it's just become so evolved. And I think the way sound and music is used in trailers now actually blurs the boundary between sound and music. And it was Mm -hmm. never treated that way before. It was always an afterthought. Now I think you have to think about letting things like sound and your sound design, your soundscape dictate the way you're going to tell your story rather than the other way around. Huh. And when did you realize that things were shifting? I mean, it's probably subjective. Like it depends on the first thing that we notice, you know, uh, but I do think on things like the Transformers campaign, I mean, those, I, it probably started earlier than that, but those are so sound design forward, not just in their diegetic sound of things transforming, but the, the overall soundscape. I'm thinking of certain pieces in particular where it's not music in a conventional sense. It's mm-hmm. all driven by a, a rhythm created by the editor using different sounds and it's almost like being a dj so that was 12 13 years ago but that's when i really started to notice like oh it's not just taking a song and cutting to it would you say this evolution aligns with a shift in audience expectations it's definitely like the the attention span thing is definitely Mm -hmm. definitely thing because they're watching trailers on their phones I right. mean, I'm mean guilty. If I come across a trailer on Instagram or something, it better get me within the first five seconds or I want to look at my friend's baby pictures or whatever. What are some of the recent trends you've noticed? It feels like everything is customized. Sometimes radically, sometimes subtly, but it's very rare that you hear a piece of music that's kind of unadulterated from beginning to end. But that's great because then you can make it have dynamics that maybe aren't built into the song. Can you talk more about your collaborative process? Whoever I'm working with, like we have to agree on a reference. Uh, Here's what the trailer's going for. It's like, as soon as you can agree on a BPM (laughs) and that way I'll, I can cut to a click track while they're doing their thing. It's an odd way to work, but I've learned to get used to it. Um, And then you're just, you're both on the same page about different things as you're composing because it's like a totally parallel process you know what i find really interesting and pretty unique is that you work with click tracks before you get a piece of music can you uh can you tell me how that works it allows me to work in parallel with the composer and if we can agree on a bpm then i know i know where certain things are and then it's just adjusting i would love to know about a quiet place Can you tell us about your process working on that? Right off the bat, it's a cool challenge. Mm -hmm. Nobody can talk, particularly in the first teaser. And definitely didn't seem like 
a, a music driven proposition. Dave actually, the editor gave the music department a great direction. He's like, I need, I need sound that gives the impression of silence. You know, he meant that in terms of sound design and, and music. But mm-hmm. Dave himself is the one who found the Alien Covenant track. And it was that like very kind of textural, had a couple of signature little high subtle things in it, but it just seemed atmospheric. For the second one, I think the second one is a good illustration of what is sound design and what is music. Atmospheric, but I can't tell what elements are part of the music and what elements are part of the sound design. And yet it's not even supposed to be noticeable anyway. It just has to feel quiet and like they're being set up for a scare. How do immersive media influence movie trailers today? You know, in the, you can imagine the first teaser, if it had been made 25 years ago, it would have been like, you know, listen closely. Don't ever make a sound or, you know, whatever the copy says. And that would have been the case. And you realize how much those devices keep the audience at arm's length. And I think that applies to so much of our work that we do now and the way trailers work. The evolution of the trailer is more immersive for the viewer, even despite the fact that we're walking on our phones or laptops, but the aesthetic is more immersive. And so much of that is music and sound design. Okay. So what are your thoughts on the state of movie trailers today? The trailer is an old form of film marketing, and it's as viable now as it's ever been. And the format hasn't changed. So many things about it have changed. So it is a curious dichotomy, but it makes sense because the hook is the hook. The rest of it is storytelling. And if you're right. people want to be told stories, even if they're only a couple of minutes long. And that's the... That's where I feel like what we are, what we, our industry is really kind of at the top of its form because it's so sophisticated and elegant the way these things are, are, are tackled in trailers. You know, that's still the way that you continue to compel a very sophisticated audience is not easy. And yet I think every trailer that you see has to have some degree of that. And it's really, I think it's awesome. Hey, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening. I love movie trailers and video game trailers. I've been doing this forever, and I geek out on this. So if you're listening and and find as much enjoyment to this as I do, then sweet kindred spirits here. So appreciate you. Keep making music. Keep making trailers. Keep cutting. Keep doing graphics. Keep writing. Keep watching movies. Keep playing video games. Keep doing your thing. Keep your head up. Peace.